Hello friends, welcome to jQuery video tutorial series. In the previous video tutorials, we understood how to use jQuery in our HTML document and execute the jQuery code. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss the jQuery syntax. Most of the time, we find the jQuery statement written something like this or like this. Most of the time, we find the dollar instead of jQuery. I told you that dollar is an alias for jQuery. Either we can follow this syntax or this syntax, no problem. But most of the time we find this syntax followed for writing jQuery statements. We are going to understand each and every part of these uh, syntaxes here. The first part is uh, the jQuery function itself or the dollar function itself. And uh, the second part is the expression. The third part is the action to be performed. And the fourth part is the parameters of the actions. Let's understand step by step jQuery function or the dollar function is used to query or select HTML elements on the page. Based on the given expression, it selects and returns an array of all matching HTML elements. jQuery function or dollar function is used to query or target HTML elements on the page. Based on the given expression, it selects and returns an array of all matching HTML elements. Expression can be a CSS selector or a JavaScript object or a JavaScript function or an HTML code. An expression can be a CSS selector. It can be a tag selector, class selector, ID selector, etc, etc, etc. Based on the given selector, the jQuery selects them. We can pass a JavaScript object like document object, this object. We can also pass JavaScript functions to execute we can pass a string of HTML code to create HTML elements dynamically at one time. Let's have a demonstration and understand how we can use the jQuery to select or target HTML elements and how it returns an array of HTML elements. I minimize the word. I right click on default.html open with the notepad. You can see that default.html is open in the notepad. It has the basic HTML document structure code written. Title is set to jQuery demo and we have already linked the jQuery file to our HTML document. I minimize it. I right click on default.html open with the Google Chrome. You can see that default.html is open in the Chrome and title is set to jQuery demo. I go to notepad here in the body section. I am going to say h1 h-e-a-d-i-n-g heading text. I create one h1 element file save go to browser and refresh. You can see that heading text got displayed. I go to notepad. I am going to create three paragraphs. Here I say paragraph text closing P. I am going to copy that line of code, paste twice, file save, go to browser and refresh. You can see that the paragraph text got displayed three times. I go to customize button, click on more tools, click on developer tools. You can see that the developer tools is open. Here we have different panels to understand. The first panel we are going to understand is elements panel. You can see here the source code of the currently open HTML document. We have h1 three paragraphs. Now I am going to identify this h1 uniquely in the page by giving an id attribute value. id is equal to heading 1. So we have given an id to this h1 element. We can very easily access this in jQuery with the help of this id attribute value. File, save, go to browser and uh, refresh. You can see that the id is set to heading 1. And the console we are going to use to write some J jQuery code or a JavaScript code and test. So we take help of the console to test the jQuery execution. So here I tell to the jQuery, jQuery locate any HTML element in this page. If its tag name is set to P, return them. If I hit enter, you can see that the jQuery has written an array of HTML elements. We know that the square brackets indicate array in JavaScript. Within this, we have three elements, three paragraphs, right? And we know that arrays are going to follow zero based indexing. So the first element is placed at zeroth index, second element is placed at first index, and third element is placed at second index. And if you see the tag name at the bottom, we should have the tag name is P. So based on the tag name, we have selected the HTML elements and displayed them using jQuery. We can access the HTML elements with the help of id attribute value also. So here I say jQuery, now you should select and return HTML element 
whose ID attribute value is set to heading 1. Simple. If I hit enter, you see that it has written an array again. It has one element. You can see length is 1. And the first element is placed at the 0th index. And also you can see some of the actions that you can perform on the selected elements. If you want, you can add a class, CSS class. And um, uh, you can apply some CSS style. You can add a click event on the selected elements. You can add uh, mouse events if you want. You can add keyboard events. A lot of things you can perform. Those are actually actions. I discuss about actions soon. Okay. So as I told, to the jQuery, we can pass a CSS selector. This is a tag selector. This is an ID selector. We can pass wide variety of CSS selectors. We can pass the JavaScript object. We can pass JavaScript functions. If we want, we can pass the uh, HTML code that we see later. At present, uh, I just uh, want to show you that there is a jQuery function. If you pass to it a CSS selector, it returns an array of matching HTML elements. I hope that is clear to you. And the next thing, as I told, on the selected elements, we can perform different actions. So let's discuss about this action point. Actions can be another jQuery method or a function. So in jQuery, we have different methods or functions. Those functions or methods we can use to perform actions on the selected HTML elements. Actions indicate action to be performed on selected HTML element. Actions may or may not accept parameters. Parameters indicate the requirements of the action. For example, if I want to apply a CSS style, here the CSS is an action. The CSS requirements are, we should pass two parameters actually. The first parameter is the property and the second parameter is the value of that property. So I want to apply to the heading one, a CSS style 2px solid red border. So how do we write the code, jQuery code, something like this. We should write jQuery, select any HTML element whose ID is set to heading one, apply the CSS style border 2px solid red. You can write like this or like this. So what this code does, it selects any HTML element whose ID attribute value is set to heading one and applies the CSS style 2px solid red border. Let's see that. I go to Chrome. Here I say jQuery select any HTML element whose ID attribute value is set to heading one dot apply this CSS style. We know that the CSS action or a function accepts two parameters. The first parameter is the CSS style. So I'm giving here border. And the second parameter is the value of that property. I say here 2px solid red. Let me zoom the content so that you can see clearly what I am writing. If I hit enter, you can see that to the heading text, we have a 2px solid red border applied. And also the jQuery has written the array, which has one element that is h1 element, which has an ID of heading one. Similarly, I can apply styles to these paragraphs if I want. I think you people can say me what code I have to write. What I have to write? I should tell to the jQuery first. jQuery, select HTML elements whose tag name is set to P and apply the CSS style, comma. The CSS style I want to apply is the background color. So I say it here, background dash color of cyan. If I hit enter, you can see that all three paragraphs are having the background color set to cyan and jQuery has written an array which has three paragraphs. That is how we use the jQuery to select HTML elements and perform actions on those selected HTML elements. I hope you guys have clearly understood the jQuery syntax. I think for this video tutorial, this much is enough friends. I suggest you people to code up to here. Try some other code yourself if you want. In the next video tutorial, we get more information on jQuery. For more benefits and be up to date, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.